like we're hi, not having... welcome to Still the Thing, uh, a, a interview show where I ask the only question I give a shit about, which is what is your favorite horror movie and why? With me today is Will McCoy. So, so tell us, Will, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, uh, the Exorcist. Ah, yes. The 1973 film The Exorcist, directed by William Friedkin and starring Linda Blair and Ellen Burstein. So. <laughs> yes. This is fucking dumb. Um, anyway, what, uh, I have notes. Mm. So why is this your favorite, why is The Exorcist your favorite movie? It's a classic. You know, I, I mean... As far as, like, horror movies, I feel like, as a genre, have evolved where it used to be just, uh, you know, ominous tones, and now it's all slasher flicks, but The Exorcist mm -hmm. was, like, the original exorcism movie that spawned, I feel, every exorcism movie thereafter. No, you're totally right, because there's lots of, like, cookie-cutter versions of it now, where they kind of take that premise of, scared girl is possessed by a demon, but it doesn't... Um, it doesn't hit quite as hard as The Exorcist mm -hmm. did because when it came out, it was so new. And it was like, possession is this thing with horror movies, in horror movies, where it's probably the most terrifying thing that can happen to not only the person that is being possessed, but everybody around them. The Evil Dead kind of talks about this a little bit. Yeah. Because in The Evil Dead, you watch as Bruce Campbell's entire you know friend group is taken over, and he has to dismember them. He has to cut up his right, fucking yeah. family. So the idea that this person isn't your friend, but they still kind of technically are, mm -hmm. was just this... I feel like it really, like, hit people super hard. And, like, with The Exorcist, not only is it the story is really cool, the thing that I find, like, so... It, it's it just... It's technically, like, just technically like, technical-wise, is just a fucking horrifying movie. Because yeah. they do shit, like, there's there's lots of sounds mixing and lots of, like, subliminal, like, blips and mm -hmm. cuts that, like, just up the tension constantly and just, like, fucking... It's just horrifying from start to finish. And there's so many, like, just visceral scenes. Like, for fuck's sake, the woman... The, she, she, she takes the cross. Jesus, let Jesus fuck you! <laughs> let Jesus fuck you! What the and it was shit at was the time that? too, dude. Like it was like what in the seventies? That's like something that you would see now in a horror movie, and we'd be like, "Fucking whatever." It's fine, but like, but then, then it was like, "What the fuck?" It was fucking wild. True story. The first time I watched The Exorcist, Christian fell asleep. We were at our dad's house. We were downstairs in the basement. My dad fell asleep. Or no, my dad was still awake. But the part where she crawls on the ceiling and twists her yeah. fucking head around. I was done. I fucking... I think I, I made my dad turn off the movie. Yeah. I was like, I'm not watching this. Christian's asleep. Fuck this. It's no, I'm like, done. Remember, dude, like, as a child... It's not and, like, fun. throughout the movie, they're showing just, like, the quick one reel flashes of, like, the demon's yeah, face coming out of the black, dude. Yeah, that fucked me up for so long. Um, and, and, um, same thing, like, within Jaws. It's, like, the subtle things that scare yeah. me the most in Jaws. Because there's... I talk about it all the fucking time. But there's a moment where... The guy is in the lake in Jaws, the, like, little lake bed that's near the ocean. Yeah. And they're like, the shark can't be in there, because he'd have to go over this. They're always fucking in there. And uh, the guy's on his boat, and you just see the shark, like, this is the shark's mouth. That's the shark. Okay. You see, like, that, that part where, the like, the pen is uh -huh. in my hand is its eye. Okay. And it doesn't break the surface. It just comes up. You see it like, yeah. go like that, and it goes back down. Fucking horrified me. Scary for, shit. That, rest of my goddamn life. Yeah, no, it is all about the little things. That's, that's, The Exorcist, there's just so many little things, whereas, like, now it's just all, seems like big things. Yeah. You know? so and that's well, what I like about they, it. They, they have to, <laughs> like, there's a thing with, like, intensity in horror movies, and, like, a lot of times, like, paranormal activity, like, kind of tapped into this well of, let's build everybody up, mm -hmm. and then, like, just really give it to them. And yeah. The Exorcist did that, where it's, it's subtle that the girl is something's wrong with her for a while and they just think she's sick and then it's like it gets to a point where uh there's clearly something is very very yeah. wrong with yeah. her like we're taking her to get mris nothing's really showing up all this you know crazy and it's just building and building and building to fucking pea soup and yeah <laughs> fucking head turning your mother sucks coxin yeah like just just it it just very 
it's a slow build, and then you get just craziness. You get and the exorcism. Yeah, a lot the, of a lot of horror movies now. I feel like trying to just throw things at you, and like just and sometimes that works. It just depends on the movie. But this is like the one of the first horror movies that actually like legitimately scared me because. Mm-hmm. Um, that and Child's Play for fucking life. Oh, dude, I hate Child's Play. Dude, the idea that your toy would come to life and kill you is just, like, horrifying Mm. in and of itself. But then, uh, what's his name? Something, Brad Dorif. Brad Dorif. Uh, he's the voice of Chucky. Okay. And, like, I think what made me realize that that movie isn't as scary as I thought it was is that, uh, the whole thing is he is a serial killer who's trapped in the body of a in doll. The body of the doll. Whereas a fucking just evil doll is way scarier to me. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, like... That's why like Annabelle's a thing, but I think everybody eventually realized that Chucky wasn't as scary as they thought yeah. because then they're seed of Chucky and they're like, Dude. Chucky's just funny now. Yeah, yeah, Chucky is There's just There's like funny. evil Leprechaun, like, you're scary at first. Now uh-huh. he's in the hood and it's Dude, fucking hilarious. Have you ever seen Leprechaun 4 in space? No. <laughs> he goes to space? <laughs> yeah, no, he goes to fucking space. It's a goddamn trip. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I have, Jesus. I have as well. I have Halloween: The Complete Collection, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the Thirteenth. And mm. I own all of the Leprechaun movies on Blu-ray, only so that I Dude. can have Leprechaun Four in space on Blu-ray and make people watch it. It's my favorite pastime. The anthology. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Making people watch that movie is like That's my good. favorite thing. Um, okay, so like, what's your favorite? moment in the whole movie like what's the what's the thing that stands out the most to you the most okay the most iconic thing and it's right on the cover is that scene where he gets out of the cab and there's the music playing Uh uh-huh which like that's a really good that's a really good score that's like up there with um like the halloween yeah and you were talking about jaws earlier like that music you know you hear that and you're like the exorcist it's a really fucking underrated thing now with horror movies today too is like yeah score score is almost just like this weird just like low tones Mm -hmm. well they have that now that guy invented that whole instrument just for making horror movies and And i mean all those weird things the marbles rolling down and and i mean that in and of itself is cool but i don't know it just feels like the the score adds so much personality to Mm -hmm. the movie that like when you watch the thing or you watch uh halloween like it's just it's a part of the fabric of the movie and same thing with The Exorcist. It has a great score, and I just feel like there's less emphasis on stuff like that now. Yeah. And same thing why I really like this movie in general is that it, it's, like I said, it's all about the, t- like, technical aspects of, yeah. like, let's make a movie that's just technically kind of horrifying. We just use what's at our disposal to make this movie that's just fucked. Mm-hmm. And um, for me, I think... My favorite moment in that whole movie is, um, it has to be the subliminal demon face. Yeah. Because that's the thing that, like, when I think about that movie, that's the first thing that pops up Mm -hmm. into my head, because it always, it's, like, it's just, and it's just a dude with, like, black makeup and white. Yeah, no, it wasn't a... It's not even, I could do that makeup in my bathroom, like, right now, and I will. No. No. (laughs) Do Um, it. Now I might have to cut in yeah. me actually having that face makeup. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, and then also just the the Linda Blair, the girl who plays mm-hmm. uh, Reagan. Uh, the fact that that it's she's a little girl and she's saying all of this fucked up shit. Fucked. Yeah. And it's like. It's just really, like, they went for it, like, so hard. Well, and I know, I think it was a thing that a bunch of people, like, on the set, they they were having nightmares and stuff, like, everyone. There's, like, a curse, like, there's, like, rumors that there's, like, the exorcism set was cursed, like, for real. Well, you should look it up sometime, I don't have all the facts right in front of me, but. And you know what, though, like, that was one of, like, the best parts about it was, who, uh, whoever played the mother, I forget her name, but. She played that role so well, and it was like the movie, uh, in some ways, was just about her and what she was going through. Like, she, you know, was she going crazy? Mm-hmm. Is this all in her head? Is her daughter just sick? Yeah. What's going on with her? And, like, the trauma that she's going through, like, I, I, 
It's like her performance in that reminds me of like Shelley Duvall's in The Shining. About, yeah. I was just about to say it's up there with Shelley Duvall's in The Shining. Yeah, but that movie just... fucking wrecked. Shelley Duvall, I don't know if. I no, know I've if, heard uh, about that. Like just the way that they treated her on set and shit. Stanley to get her in Kubrick, that. God help him. He he's a make, monster. He can make a good movie, but he's a fucking horrible monster. Yeah, like, when he does. Why would you do that? Why would you somebody? do this to a person? Mm. I get it. Like you're trying to get a performance out of them, but like. Just get somebody who can fake it real good. Yeah, like, no, they got the performance, that. but yeah, that movie. But yeah, so and but that's the one thing like I love about it too is like just how the 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 religious you know I don't want to say undertones because it's present throughout the entire movie. Yeah, but you know it's tied in throughout all of it, and uh, <clears throat> you know the priest he he's going through this internal struggle the entire struggling Max with his Sido. faith. Yeah, Max von Sydow is fucking great. Man, that fucking he's in, but like in that movie in particular, it's just yeah. Fucking, I just like fades. yeah, he was uh, amazing in the movie. So I I mean yeah. I don't know. That movie just, like, everything in it just kind of sticks to you, I guess. And it did, like, when I was a kid and the first time I watched it, like, I was, like, shook by it, you yeah, know? Like, it is a, it's a movie that sticks with you yeah. every time, like, the first time it, uh, you watch that movie, it does, it sticks with you, like, just because it is, it's very existential, like, the dread it kind of, so, like, because, like, I, like, now that I'm getting older, I think about... Like I have a lot of anxiety about having children, and yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the first things that pops into my head because I'm a horror fan is is what if they become a serial killer? What if they become possessed by a demon? I swear to God, you fucking do, believe if my me. fucking kid gets possessed, <laughs> right? Like, what am I gonna do? You do. I feel like now I've seen enough horror movies that I'm just like, dude, if my kid's possessed, fuck it, I'm. Swinging the axe, I'm doing it. I'm not going through that shit. <laughs> We're going full like, yeah. evil dead and Let's just do like, it. burying you in the yard with a wooden It's not worth cross. it. There's yeah. so many. It's like, what? Yo, if you don't get that demon out, <laughs> I'm not going down like no, that. I'm not, no, hell no. Um, all right, let's go to trivia. Oh. Um, before we wrap up, I want you to learn one new thing about your favorite horror movie. Okay. So we're going to go to IMDb's trivia section. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, this is Warner Brothers' highest grossing film of all time when you consider, when it's adjusted for inflation. Oh, no shit. This movie is the highest, uh, for, at least for Warner Brothers, but I think it's actually the highest grossing horror movie that of exists. That exists. I think it might have beaten it, but I don't know if that's beaten it when in just adjusted for inflation. Oh, uh, the new it. The new it, not okay, not the yeah, not yeah. the miniseries that yeah. aired on TV. Um, that's fucking cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, that's kind of crazy too, because like considering, I feel like was it popular when it first came out? Like, were people like going and I think it was there? like um, when and that's not as common for horror movies. Mm -hmm. A lot of the horror movies that we watch now. Not they weren't necessarily flops, but at, at the time of like the seventies or whatever, uh, the horror movies were kind of this thing where certain types of people went. To it was see niche. It. it was very. It was niche, yeah, yeah. There was there was certain people that were going to see it, and they could always count on those people to come mm -hmm. and see it. So that's how they would turn a profit. I think with The Exorcist, it went like crazy. Like it just was like, what the fuck? But but horror but, on the radar. And it's and why like... I think that's why so many. Um, so many fucking cookie cutter versions of that movie yeah. exist now where it's like you got the exorcism of Emily Rose, you've got the last exorcism, you've got just all these movies that are just trying so hard to tap back into that. But Right. Like, I mean, really, and they're all too, like, following the same priest struggling with the faith, mm -hmm. girl is possessed, and. It's always a girl. Why can't a guy get I don't know. By I, a I demon? think is it's because like a... I, I think that, like, they do it, like, from a religious aspect. It's because, like, the innocence of a woman or something like that. Some bullshit. Or, yeah, some fucking <laughs> religious bullshit, whatever. But I, maybe that's it. Or maybe, like, people just can't really, like, give a shit about a dude being possessed. Because mm -hmm. they'll just fucking ax him right away. I like, I don't know what like, it is. I don't know. Yeah, that is interesting, though. I, bet I didn't probably, really think about that before. There's probably a whole, like, sub... Reddit about... I bet, yeah, <laughs> like, yo, why are we only possessing young women? Why are women always the ones that get possessed by demons? This is some bullshit. A study by Gage It's Stone. 2018, can we get a dude possessed Yeah, can we get a here? possessed 
boy. It doesn't have to be a man. You can get a boy. We'll still be emotionally attached to that. Oh, you know what? Maybe the omen was that kid possessed. No, he was the son of the devil. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, it's a little different. different. I don't know. Um, Shit. All right, now we're going to go to Gage's Gestions, and I'm going to suggest to you a movie. Oh, okay. I came up with the name of that just now. <laughs> Gage's Gestions. Trademarked. Um... <laughs> I think you should, if you like The Exorcism, there's a movie, it's not as popular as The Exorcism, but it's called Prince of Darkness. It was directed by John Carpenter. Um, I don't know where you can find it, but you should. If you like this movie, I'm pretty sure you like that one. Yeah. It's got a lot of similar, like, biblical overtones and stuff nice. like that. And uh, John Carpenter is a fucking amazing uh, director. So right, yeah. I think if I have to pinpoint a suggestion for you, that would be the one. Prince of Darkness. So yeah, Prince of Darkness by John John Carpenter. All right. So are you gonna ask me what my favorite horror movie is? What's your favorite horror movie? Again? Well, my favorite horror movie is still John Carpenter's The Thing, a cinematic masterpiece that blended a story steeped with paranoia and existential dread with groundbreaking practical effects, creating an instant classic of the genre. And that's all the time we have. Uh, so thank you, Will, for coming by. It was lovely to talk to you about your favorite movie. A pleasure. The Exorcist. Goodbye! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>